Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom. On today's show, Kyle Bauer visits with Adrian Percy in the Crop Science Division of Bayer. Then enjoy this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Next, Dwayne Taves catches up with Kate Hall with GMOAnswers.com. Then it's this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update, and we'll end with Plain Talk featuring Kyle and Dwayne. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at kansasgrainsorghum.org. Welcome to Farm Factor. Up first, Kyle Bauer and Adrian Percy discuss Bayer, a global company, and the different international regulations they encounter that create a complex business environment. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer. I'm very pleased I have the opportunity to visit with Adrian Percy. He is uh, with Bear Crop, no, Bear Crop Science. Can I say that? Because no, you can't say that. We, All right. We are, I'm with Bayer, but with the Crop Science Division. And, of course, we have the merger uh, that is pending with Monsanto. And then, But you have an interesting perspective um, in that uh, from Great Britain, and, and we have the Brexit issue, EU issues, United States issues, um, Britain issues. As an international company, uh, to maneuver all that is, and then to re do research and development with all those different political um, entities is a real challenge. It is. It, it's a complex environment. I mean, we're a German-based company that's working really internationally, global. Um, and uh, situations like has developed in the UK with uh, the UK uh, population deciding to exit the European Union, the famous Brexit, uh, adds some complexity. Um, it's a very interesting situation. Uh, right now in the UK, they're thinking through what does this really mean for the country. I think uh, the Brexit vote was a surprise for the British government and also the British people. They, they didn't really see it coming, even though a lot of people obviously wanted to, to make a statement and get out of Europe. So right now, uh, the British government are really thinking, what does this mean, including what does it mean for agriculture? Uh, right now, Europe is, is, uh, has a European-wide agricultural policy. They have a European-wide regulations on things like uh, crop protection products. So now with the UK opting out, it has to create its own set of rules. Uh, he may do that by, for instance, adopting a lot of European rules that already exist, or it may decide to create its own new set of policies and rules, and I think they will do that to a certain extent in agriculture. I think it's going to be important for UK farmers to be able to get access to a number of tools that have been deprived of them through EU regulations. So things like uh, certain uh, chemistry, which I think uh, they, will, they will get access to, and perhaps some biotechnology products as well. Oh, very quickly, though, where you maneuver all the policies worldwide, um, many times a policy or a chemistry that's available in one part of the world has to be um, not marketed in others. That's correct. I mean, uh, normally uh, as, a, as a global company, we always go to get uh, approvals in every major agricultural region of the world with one of our new products. Sometimes that, that is uh, easy to do and sometimes it's harder. In Europe, the, uh, the regulations over the past few years have really clamped down. Uh, so much so that we're losing a lot of very valuable tools from the marketplace. And so that is a, a complex environment for us to work in. We're visiting with Adrian Percy. He is with Bear. This is Kyle Bauer reporting back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Dwayne. Folks, come back after these messages for this week's Kansas Soybean Update. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways, of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. 
Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego is driven by the spirit of American ingenuity. Come in for a new Chevrolet car, truck, or SUV. If we don't have exactly what you want, we'll find it for you. And we also have a great selection of used cars. We make sure you have an easy, fun, and transparent sales experience that saves you time and money. But if you want high-pressure salesmen and hours spent in the finance office, you'll just have to go elsewhere. Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're making car buying great again. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Soybean Update. This is the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Patrick Delaney, American Soybean Association Policy Communications Director, joins us. And Patrick, there's legislation that's been introduced called the Cultivating Revitalization by Expanding American Agricultural Trade Act, or better known as the CREATE Act. What is the CREATE Act all about? It's something we think that means a lot for soybean farmers. Uh, First and foremost, it represents a doubling of the funding allocated to the market access program and the foreign market development programs, which are two of really the most successful and effective programs at USDA that help us gain access and expand our exports into foreign markets. So it's something that we're very much in support of. And especially for U.S. soybeans on the tremendous growth that you've seen throughout the years in that export market to to so many countries. Soybean farmers everywhere know the importance of global trade and know the importance of demand in places like China. China and places like Southeast Asia and Latin America and around the world for not only soybeans, soybean meal and soybean oil, but also for the other products that soybeans go into here at home. So you're talking about pork and poultry and dairy and eggs. And so it, it's something that I think our farmers all recognize, the, the great value of trade. The bill calls for increases for MAP to $400 million by fiscal year 2023. And for the Foreign Market Development Program, or FMD, that funding would increase to $69 million by 2023. And in one aspect, too create additional jobs as well. And I think that's one of the things that really, you know, we got caught up in during the campaign cycle is talking about the impact of trade on jobs. And I think it's really important to point out that we export a ton of what we produce on American farms. I mean, you're looking at $150 billion in ag exports in 2014 alone. That generates at home almost $200 billion in economic activity, and that supports more than a million jobs. This includes jobs on the farm, but 800,000 jobs in the non-farm sector that really supports farmers. This idea that trade costs jobs, it's just not accurate. And the more we invest in trade, the more we are able to invest in those jobs here at home. Does the CREATE Act have a lot of support in Congress? It was only introduced earlier on this week from Representatives Newhouse of Washington and Pingree of Maine. But you have great support there in Kansas with Congressman Marshall from the 1st District lending his name to it initially. It's got good bipartisan support. It should be noted the $150 billion in U.S. ag exports that occurred in 2014 produced an additional $190 $190 billion in economic activity for a total of $340 billion of economic output. Patrick Delaney, American Soybean Association Policy Communications Director, joins us on the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org. For Kansas Soybeans, I'm Greg Akagi. Hope you enjoyed this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Stay with us after the break for more Farm Factor as Dwayne Taves visits with Kate Hall. I will take action against herbicide-resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand. And I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time, for all time. 
Heinen Brothers, a fourth generation Northeast Kansas farm family, knows how tough farming can be. Farmers helping farmers. Heinen Brothers Ag, selling and servicing crop protection products, fertilizer, anhydrous ammonia, cover crops, quality aerial and ground application. Call today to learn about our extended term financing program, 800-760-4964, heinenbrothersag.com. Tarwater Farm and Home has been family owned and operated since its beginning in 1978. What you need for farm and agriculture, lawn and garden, clothing and footwear, and so much more. You'll be surprised at what you'll find in this huge store. They have what you need and lots of it. So come take a look. You'll discover that customer service is first and foremost. Always has been with the Tarwaters. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now Dwayne Taves and Kate Hall talk about the factual ag information found on GMOAnswers.com. Dwayne Taves joining you once again with Ag AM in Kansas and a chance uh, to catch up with Kate Hall talking about uh, GMOs and uh, GMO Answers, the booth that, uh, that I caught you with. And uh, certainly when we think about our urban friends, uh, there's probably more questions and, and questions that need answers. Certainly, and the question that we most often receive is just what is a GMO? Most people don't understand that a GMO is a plant that's been developed with a very specific trait, and that trait is often disease resistance, herbicide tolerance, insect resistance, to help farmers grow more crops using less inputs, which actually reduces agriculture's impact on the environment. We think about that uh, in today's uh, world, uh, it's not unlike what they used to do in plant breeding a uh, hundred years ago, it's just that the techniques that we use to do so are much different. Exactly. We're able to isolate the specific trait that we want. So instead of crossing tens of thousands of genes, we're able to take the two, three genes that code for that trait and move that into the plant we want to improve. And we think about uh, some of the things that, uh, that we are looking at and moving forward within uh, plant breeding. Uh, really, it is absolutely no introduction of anything outside. It's just a better selection process for things that are already in the DNA of those plants. Exactly. Researchers are looking for traits that they find in nature, right? They're, they're not making these up. Um, so they're, they're taking uh, uh, good traits, characteristics they find in nature to improve, again, the plants that our, our farmers grow and help feed the world. Some things that uh, will be interesting to see how they are accepted. Uh, initial traits typically were on the production side uh, for the farmer, but as we look forward, there's more and more things on the horizon that have to do with what consumers might be interested in. Absolutely. We're really excited about the innate potato. Uh, so less bruising, less browning, so it stays more appealing. Also the non-browning apple. Um, that'll be coming onto the market this year, and we're excited about that too. So when you pack those apple slices in your kids' lunches, they're less likely to throw them away. And I know that there are universities and researchers, developers, looking at enhanced nutrition. Uh, how do we uh, lessen the allergens that are in peanuts or even in wheat? So there are a lot of uses for the technology, and I think... Um, um, what's coming down the pike, so to speak, will benefit consumers directly, um, and in addition to the farmers. Certainly as uh, consumers uh, uh, out there that uh, really just don't have the, the best understanding of, and there's a lot of misinformation out there about uh, the mad scientist, if you will. There is, and, and it's tough to battle, um, but we also know that consumers are really interested in learning the facts, and so with GMO Answers, we're very active on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, as well as our website, gmoanswers.com. In addition to GMO Answers, there are a lot of other great resources as well, your local Farm Bureau, um, also USFRA, the Center for Food Integrity. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of organizations around and in agriculture have stepped up over the last few years, so we're putting out much more positive, factual, and information and like with you trying to get our story out to more people. 
And ultimately, we think about it, uh, those farmers and ranchers out there, they're feeding their own family as well. Exactly. They wouldn't produce, grow, feed their family anything um, that, that they would, you know, obviously not want to feed the public. So it's also important to recognize that aspect as well. The biggest thing uh, is if you have questions, seek credible resources to get those answers. Exactly. And at GMOAnswers.com, we have over 180 independent experts who are answering questions. Farmers, ranchers, organic farmers, registered uh, dietitians, nutritionists, scientists, epidemiologists. We've answered over 1,300 questions on our website. We also have our companies. We're sponsored by the large six companies, BASF, Bayer, Dow, DuPont, Pioneer, uh, Monsanto, and Syngenta. And they're answering questions specific to their business practices. People often wonder what's going on inside those companies. And and our, our organization is being very upfront and open about what we're doing. Our thanks to Kate Hall joining us with GMO Answers uh, for you. As a consumer, you can certainly get the truthful information if you seek it out. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Come back after the break for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Have you asked yourself how can I help provide relief to wildfire victims? Well, you can go to the Ashland Community Foundation or you can go to the Kansas Livestock Association Foundation and make monetary gifts. Another way, you can buy this beautiful print that was painted by Dr. Eva Gardner of the Gardner Angus Ranch of Ashland and Clark County area before the fire. This painting will be sold through the Kansas Livestock Association Foundation and all proceeds will be provided to victims of the wildfire. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor and this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. Kansas Farm Bureau, like FFA, believes in the future of agriculture. So we've partnered on a high school version of the Farm Bureau Discussion Meet Competition in an effort to develop knowledgeable, well-spoken problem solvers in the next generation of leaders. The FFA Discussion Meet strengthens students' ability to analyze problems, think critically about solutions, and work cooperatively with their peers. This event encourages FFA members to learn about topics in crop production, livestock management, natural resources, agricultural education, and FFA. But they take it a step further as they develop the skills and courage to speak up in tough conversations and realize that listening is a key to solving problems and creating change. In its first year, we've seen nearly 70 students from across the state participate and we're encouraged for the future of agriculture. Learn more about this event at www.kfb.org FFA and come check it out for yourself at the final round of the state competition. We'll be back after the break with this week's Plain Talk. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. 
From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Person who's involved in ag production and cattle, cattle ranching, Bill Rischel here in North Platte, told me about Kansas Regenerative Medicine. And after talking to Dr. Pope, we did a lot of reading and researching, looking on the internet about it. I guess the thing that impressed me is that he told me, he said, if, it, if we don't think it's going to help you, we're not, we're not going to do it. And I thought that was a, a very good approach. I'm a former uh, athlete, played college basketball, played overseas after college, had some severe trauma on the right ankle, right knee, joint in my hand also. This brace is what I had to wear all the time. Now, I don't wear this during the day. That's a real improvement for me. Uh, my knee uh, doesn't bother me. Um, this joint came around quick. Um, it was the first thing I noticed improving. You can see in the background here, there's different fish and game that I hunt. The ability to walk was impacting my outdoor uh, endeavors. I think it's really, vi really viable and I encourage anybody that's interested to go down and at least do a consultation with them. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome back. Now let's see what Kyle and Dwayne are up to today on Plain Talk. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer with Plain Talk with the thoughtful Dwayne Taves. I have to ponder this for a moment. I'm really unsure. There's no record of a killer whale in the wild ever attacking a human. Fact or fiction? Well, of course there's no record of it because when well, they the killed him, they the guy ate, wasn't there who's to gonna tell? write it. Who's going to write it down? Yeah. So I'll go with, okay, you said there's no record. I'll no go record with fact. of a killer whale. I'll go with fact. It is a fact. Killer whales held in captivity have attacked humans, but who could blame them? Why, well, yeah. Who Besides that, 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 there's little... somebody there to write it down. <laughs> and there's, there's witnesses. Exactly right. Yeah. So what did killer whales... How'd they get that moniker, killer whale? Well, they kill a lot of other things. Uh, sh uh, for instance, seals. Yeah? If you're a seal and you see a killer whale... You better hit the high you road. You better be a swimmer. You better get back further up on land. Let's face it. If you're a seal or a penguin, you're what just your put on this... Life? You're just put in this world to be food for somebody else. Your job is to eat little fishes so that you can be eaten by a bigger fish. Bigger fish. <laughs> Exactly. There's something ironic about that. Well, isn't you know there's that the that terribly that tragic care. story that time when they nursed these seals back to health and oh. took them out to the beach and there was a small group there and put right. them in the water. They swam off and the whale yeah. came, killer whale came by yeah, and, and slooped them. <laughs> that was the end of that. <laughs> well, really yeah, expensive all, lunch. Yeah, it wasn't all for loss. Yeah. though. I mean it served a purpose. Yeah, exactly. Well, killer whale was pretty happy about the deal. <laughs> Glad. These taste. Hope they tenderize These them. taste like domestic seals. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, a little um, more to them than the you rest. You know, um, isn't it amazing though? Sometimes on YouTube you see these swarms of fish that the, the small fish like herrings, I guess, or mackerels. That not mackerels. Those are not pretty mackerel. good size. That's a big fish. Yeah, uh, herrings that they they Ch shad. Yeah, and they swarm chub. them all up in a group, and then they. Big fish will just go right up the middle and eat a thousand of them <laughs> once. <laughs> Take a big old gulp. Big old gulp. Kind of wonder yeah. though. It gets a lot of water in there with that. How does he? Does he go out through his gills? How does he? Whales don't have gills. Whales don't have gills. No, they're mammals. Okay. They, okay. Yeah, they have to come to the top to. Oh, they get, get a that little hole. They they squirt. Then, they spit. <laughs> they said. And yeah. It's like, yeah. So you have a group mouthful of. Of fish, a fish and, and then you squirt the water up top. Squirt the water. Yeah, and don't take that one to the bank. But okay. anyway, yeah. That's, that's they don't have gills, story. I guarantee you that. Okay. Okay, what else they do we... They got fins. They have fins? Why don't they have gills? They don't have scales. Well, there's lots of fish that don't have scales. Uh, so how do you know how much they weigh if they don't have scales? <laughs> oh. Uh, you always want to catch the fish that doesn't uh, have scales. 
Yeah. So that way you can lie. You can say what you want about how big he was. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. We're here every Tuesday on Ag AM in Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.